Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. So, we were uh, in the module of power semiconductor devices and uh, today's lecture we will be discussing MOSFETs. This is the physical structure of the MOSFET. This shows the basic physical structure. The structure of course varies with the type of MOSFET. And uh, what you see here is that you have this uh, N plus region. Then you have the N minus region. These uh, two actually is uh, consisting of the drain and it gets connected to the drain. And then you have this P region and then you have the source which is your basically your N plus region. And then what you also see here is gate area where you have these metallic conductors and then you have in between this field oxide. So, there is this oxide, so that is why it is called as the metal oxide field effect transistor. Now, there are various different types of MOSFETs are there. So, the uh, symbols also are slightly different depending on that. So, this one is uh, the symbol of depletion mode, N channel depletion mode MOSFET and this is N channel enhancement mode MOSFET, the symbol of this. Now, uh, what I have seen is that uh, many times people do not cautiously use the symbol when they are simply drawing the power electronic circuits. So, just by looking at the circuit of the power electronic converter, do not assume that what is the type of MOSFET uh, that is going to be used for that converter. Okay. So, uh, this is N channel enhancement mode MOSFET. This is the one which is mostly used for power electronic converters. Now, these are the pictures of MOSFETs. This is a discrete MOSFET, power MOSFET. And uh, you can see these uh, three legs, three terminals coming out which are gate, drain and source. Then it may be also available in the form of integrated modules. This is a picture of uh, integrated module by Infineon and what it contains inside is this two MOSFETs connected like this in forming one leg of an inverter. Okay. So, here your main terminals are your drain, the source and drain these two are connected together and then there is uh, this source. So, those are these three terminals that you see here in the module. And uh, then also you will be having this your gate and source for one MOSFET and gate of source of another MOSFET. Apart from this, when you observe this physical structure, what you see here is that there is a parasitic BJT inside this MOSFET. Okay. So, uh, when you see this drain current, so mostly inside the MOSFET when it flows, it goes to the N plus, N minus, P and then N plus and so it flows from drain to source. So, and that also is the direction of current that you see if this parasitic BGT turns on. So, that also will be allowing the conduction of current in the same direction. Plus, you see here an integral diode which is called as the body diode of the MOSFET. So, this uh, body diode allows the flow of current in the opposite direction from source to drain. So, that is why what uh, we can say is that that MOSFET allows condition of current in both directions. It is bidirectional current flow which is possible in MOSFET. Okay. And that is mainly because of this body diode and uh, it is helpful in power electronic circuits because you do not have to connect an additional diode for opposite direction of current flow. Many of the power electronic circuits require the flow of current in both directions and that is where this body diode becomes useful. So, uh, that is why you should uh, keep it in the mind that bidirectional current flow is possible in MOSFET and that is mainly because of the body diode. But uh, mostly when you consider the blocking voltage, so blocking voltage is only of one uh, polarity, unipolar blocking voltage.
and this is also something that is expected by you because if there is a diode over here a your anti parallel diode body diode. So, that will not uh, block the voltage in the block voltage of opposite polarities. So, only unipolar voltage that means uh, the voltage where your drain is positive with respect to source those voltages can be blocked by the MOSFET. So, when you see the blocking voltage uh, specification of a MOSFET. So, that is basically with respect to source how positive the drain can be. Now, let us look into more of the parasitic elements which are present in the MOSFET. The, before this I would like to tell you that there are many parasitics that are involved in MOSFETs. We are not going to discuss all of them as I have told you before also in case of diodes that we will not be going into the uh, device physics. We will be looking only into the uh, terms which are important for understanding data sheets and for uh, from design perspective of power electronic converters whatever is required that is what we are going to see in this course. Okay. So, uh, the key uh, parasitic elements which play a, a role uh, that is one is BJT we saw that in your anti parallel diode or the body diode that is also very important. And apart from that there are three capacitances in your MOSFET. One is CGD gate to drain there is a capacitance. Then between gate and source there is another capacitance and then there between drain and source there is another capacitance. So, if I uh, draw it So, three capacitances over here one is gate to drain then between gate and source and then another one between drain to source. So, this CGD gate to drain this is also called as Miller capacitance it actually is responsible for showing a Miller effect. So, what uh, we see here is that that this is CGD this gate to drain capacitance versus drain to source voltage. So, when drain to source voltage is very high of the order of the rating of the uh, diode uh, of the MOSFET voltage then what you see is that that uh, this CGD is, is relatively less. Then as this drain to source voltage reduces then what we see this gate to drain capacitance that increases a lot and uh, that is that Miller effect uh, that happens inside the MOSFET. And uh, based on these three capacitances there are three capacitances which are uh, mentioned in the data sheet. Uh, one is your input capacitance CISS. So, this is the sum of uh, gate to source and gate to drain. So, this is input capacitance and then you have the output capacitance which is sum of uh, CGD and CDS. And you have the reverse transfer capacitance which is basically CGD. So, these three capacitances these are of lot of importance in MOSFET because they play very important role during the turn on and turn off process of the MOSFET. Then there are another uh, important parasitic element which are resistances in the MOSFET. So, here you can see that that uh, these there are different uh, resistances in, in associated with different uh, regions of uh, the physical structure of the MOSFET. Your N plus region has a resistance, P region has a resistance then uh, this inside this drift region has a resistance, N plus region has a resistance. So, all these have uh, various different resistances. So, uh, now uh, we can 
uh, just uh, use one resistance which shows the effect of uh, all of these. So, that is your R D S on which is associated with on state voltage drop in the MOSFET. Now, usually this RDS on is significant and on state voltage drop for MOSFET is relatively higher as compared to BJT or IGBT. Okay. And the reason is that that MOSFET is a majority carrier device. only one type of carriers they play role in the conduction of current through the MOSFETs and that is why there is a majority carrier device. And so, um, what happens is that, that the on state voltage drop becomes higher that is also I mean, responsible for the MOSFET to be a very fast device it turns on and turns off very quickly because it is a majority carrier device, but then there is a cost to it and that cost is in terms of the RDS on that increases and the on state voltage drop increases and so your conduction loss then becomes higher in MOSFET. Now, let us see the VI characteristics of the MOSFET. So, this is ID and then this is VDS drain to source voltage. So, here you can see that it has got three regions one is this ohmic region and then you have this active region and then uh, you have this cutoff region. So, ohmic region what is happening is that drain to source voltage is very small, but currents can be very high. So, that is ohmic region and why we are calling it as ohmic region? because you can see here that it is almost like a straight line. It is like a, a, a resistive nature of, uh, of the MOSFET. So, that is why we are calling it as ohmic region. Then there is this active region. In this active region what you see here is that, that your both drain to source voltage and currents drain currents they both can be high together. So, more losses are going to take place in this active region and so this region is absolutely not preferred in power electronic circuits. You have to operate it in ohmic region or you will be operating in this cutoff region where what uh, you can see which is written as forward blocking characteristics over here. Uh, we see is that, that the current is uh, negligible very small and the voltage it can block is very high. Okay, and after that if you exceed that voltage then actually breakdown is going to happen. And uh, this RDS on is associated with the slope of these lines in your ohmic region. So, RDS on it is delta VDS by delta ID is uh, what is given. And then uh, uh, as uh, you go from cutoff to ohmic how you can do that is using this gate to source voltage. So, when we increase this gate to source voltage, we have to increase it first above threshold voltage. If the gate to source voltage is uh, below threshold voltage, what will happen is that, that it will be in the cutoff region, it, it will not be conducting. After that as you increase uh, your gate to source voltage above threshold, then it will go into active region. So, here depending on how much gate to source voltage you provide diode current is limited by that. You can see these straight line curves which are parallel to your uh, VDS axis that uh, uh, you are depending on the what is the value of VGS ID is getting decided. Okay. So, MOSFET if you want to use it for amplifier applications in your analog electronics then uh, uh, this is the region in which it is used your active region. And further if you increase your gate to source voltage then what happens it goes into the 
omic region. So, all these different different curves that you see are for different different values of K2 source voltage. So, what we observe from here is that by controlling by changing the K2 source voltage you can control the uh, MOSFET um, that means you can drive it from cutoff to ohmic region or from ohmic region to cutoff region. So, then what we understand from this is that MOSFET is a voltage controlled device. Then this shows ID versus uh, VGS a forward uh, transfer characteristics. This is called as the output characteristics and this is called as the forward transferred uh, characteristics. This is of ID drain current, this ID drain current versus gate to source voltage, this voltage VGS gate to source voltage that is uh, shown here. And as I told you below this threshold voltage VGS threshold, uh, this MOSFET will not allow any conduction, it is in cutoff. So, no ID and then it uh, increases as VGS is increased okay? and this is called as the forward transconductance GFS. So, what are the key points of uh, this lecture? First of all that your MOSFET is a majority carrier device. So, it has got high on state voltage draw. Then bidirectional current flow is possible because of the body diode. Then there are three capacitances uh, which are of lot of importance for turning on and turning off of the MOSFET. And uh, MOSFET starts to conduct uh, above uh, when the VGS the gate to source voltage is above the threshold voltage and it is a voltage control device you basically change gate to source voltage to control that means for to go from uh, ohmic region to your cutoff region or vice versa. And sufficient gate to source uh, voltage needs to be provided to drive it in the ohmic region. When your gate to source voltage is low, it is in cutoff, when it increases further it goes into active region and then when you further increase it um, uh, and it is sufficiently uh, enough the gate to source voltage, then it goes into the ohmic region. Thank you.